This is one definition for the number e, or more concisely written in summation notation. This number is famously irrational. Let's prove it by contradiction, assuming that e is rational, that it's a number a over b, where a and b are positive integers. Now that we have this assumption, we're going to define a new number, call it x. Now this is a little bit wonky looking, it has e in its definition. Essentially what we're going to do is substitute our two equations for that number e. This will lead us to some contradiction. Let's first substitute in our assumption that e is that rational a over b. We can distribute this b factorial to both terms and do some canceling as well. What should we notice here? Well, remember b is a positive integer itself, so this first quantity is going to be an integer, and this sum is going to be an integer as well. That's because b is going to be greater than or equal to n for all n in this sum. What's the consequence of this? x is an integer minus an integer, or x is an integer. Let's substitute our other representation for e into x, this infinite sum. Both of these are really summing the same thing, it's just the first one being infinite, the second one only up to b. We could distribute this b factorial and combine these sums, just summing from b plus 1 up to infinity. And the thing to notice here, all of the terms will be positive. In other words, our quantity x is strictly greater than 0. Here comes the big reveal. If we write out this quantity using the definition of factorials, we will see some canceling going on since n inside our sum starts at b plus 1. In other words, n is greater than or equal to b plus 1. What that means is everything in the numerator cancels out, and we have this sort of truncated factorial of n down to b plus 1 in the denominator. If you count those terms, we'll have n minus b of them, b plus 1 being the smallest term. We can actually write a bound for this. This quantity is going to have to be less than or equal to if every term in that product was b plus 1, since b plus 1 is the smallest one. Here's the most fun part. We have this representation of this sum now. We can re-index it to make it look a little nicer, like a geometric series. We know the sum of a geometric series, the first term divided by 1 minus the ratio. This simplifies to 1 over b. Recalling that in our original assumption b was a positive integer, 1 over b has to be strictly less than 1. In other words, our quantity x, which is an integer, is greater than 0 and less than 1. There is no integer greater than 0 and less than 1. This is the contradiction we've been looking for. It does sort of bring up a problem for me, though. We sort of take for granted the fact that e is irrational, even though we had to go to some lengths to prove it. It makes you think what other things are out there that we just take for granted, even though we don't necessarily know why. Things as simple as 1 plus 1 equals 2. Why is that true? To learn that, you'll have to watch this video. I think you'll find it really interesting just how much goes into a simple fact like this. I'll see you in that one.